Okay. Wow. What a wonderful group we have here to enter, to, to, for, to come in and be blessed by our children's Destination Kids Choir. Miss Christy and Miss Carol have been working hard with these children, and you are going to be blessed. So thank you for coming, and thank you, boys and girls, for being courteous and, and watching in a wonderful way tonight. These children that have prepared something special for you. Without further ado, Christy. What are you doing if you're working? Did you that forget that today is the party? He probably isn't even aware it's December. So tell us, Einstein, what are you working on today? Analyzing the effect cold has on water. If I can save you some time, it's called ice. Hee <laughs> hee ha ha ha. If you really want to know, in preparation for our impending Yuletide festivities, translation or Christmas party. As I was saying, I've discovered the formula for manufacturing a reasonable facsimile of, of manufactured soap. It should provide a suitable replication of winter atmospheric conditions. Translation, he's making fake snow as a decoration for our Christmas party. That's great, Beaker. Where'd you learn to do that? Well, it's not really that big a deal. After all, snow is only frozen precipitation in a form of translucent hexagonal ice crystals that fall in soft white flakes. I just thought I'd make it feel more like Christmas in here. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Translucent hexagonal ice crystals. Okay, enough of this science lecture. We've got a party get ready for. Get the tape, tie a bow, wrap a gift, pray for snow, counting down the minutes till we're ready to go.
should just about do it. Well, he might not exactly lo love it, but I do think he'll be surprised. I guess we could have at least asked him to help. Are you serious? He would have had us using Bunsen burners for candles and given us a quiz on cloud patterns in winter weather. I'm looking, I'm looking. Let me get this straight. We have a cardboard fireplace, a plastic wreath, an artificial tree, and fake snow. Yep, nothing says real, real Christmas like fake decorations. <laughs> hey, speaking of fake snow, how is we coming over there bigger? Almost there, the resolution has begun to crystallize, and we should be close to... Close to turning on the Christmas lights. Did anyone check them to make sure they still work before we went to all the trouble putting them on the tree? Well, I didn't try them, but I just feel certain that they're going to work. Uh, should we wait for Mr. Cutler? No, let's go ahead and do it. Savannah, you get the honors. Can we get a drum roll, please? Five, four, three, two, one. No. Oh, no, this can't be happening. Hey, Baker, if the North Pole can spare you for a few minutes, we have a bit of a problem over here. Do you know anything about Christmas lights? Only that they are based on a closed electrical circuit that is connected so that the current passes is through each circuit element in turn without branching off. No, not that. Do you know how to fix them? Everyone knows there's got to be lights before there can be Christmas. Party, and I had no idea you'd go through this much trouble. It really wasn't any trouble. 
at least until we figured out that the lights did not work. Wait, that's not supposed to be on yet. Oh, there. That should solve the, uh, uh, that should we solve the situation. Don't, don't ask him how he fixes it. I'm afraid he'll just tell us. All I did was extract the bulbs to test their resistance. I think he means he took them out until he found the bad one. Well, it, however, you did, Peter. Thank you very much. Hey, I know we're getting ready for a party here, but does anyone hate, I would hate for to miss out on a chance to learn something. Well, so does anyone know the story of light? Are you referring to Isaac Newton's speculation on matter and light? Beaker! Uh, if you really want to know where the story of light began, then you can read about it in the first chapter of the Bible. The first thing God did when he got ready to create was turn on some light. There must have been a pretty big light switch. Well, actually, all he had to do was say, let there be light, and there was light. Mr. Cutler wants to know is the story of the light at Christmas. You know, the shepherds on the hillside? Well, you're getting closer. Closer to finally start of the party? We got all afternoon for the party. Let's talk about the for a f this for a few minutes. Besides, we're still waiting on Beaker to provide us some snow. I know there are some shepherd men in the nativity set, but what do they have to do with light? It's more about what light had to do with them. That's right, Jules. It was the middle of the night when the light came to some shepherds on the hillside where they were watching their sheep. The Bible says, an angel of the Lord stood before them, 
and the glory of the Lord shine around them, and they were terrified. But the, the angel said, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good news of great joy for all the people. Translation? I didn't even say anything, Todd. I know, this time I'm the one that needs a translation. No wonder the shepherds are scared. If I had to see some people like that, I got I had a little dance myself. Shepherds in the field, it was just another night. They were watching their sheep underneath the moonlight. Everything changed right before their eyes when the glory of the Lord filled the skies. And I know they, and I know they were scared. We can't blame them, but there's just one thing that I keep wondering. Shepherds in the middle of the night to cover their eyes from the light so bright. Did they turn their heads? Did they want to run away? You know, I really want to know did the shepherds need shade? When they heard the Some great news unto you is born on this very day, and you'll find him in a bed that's filled with hay. And suddenly the sky was filled with shouts, but there's still one thing that I wonder about. Did the shepherds need shade? the creation and the light of the shepherd saw. Is it the light of Christmas or the story of, story of light? Well, technically, I suppose you could even say it's both. That Christmas is the story of light. As in the lights on the tree? Well, not exactly. You mean there's more? Duh, she's talking about the light of the star. Any star in particular? The star that led the three wise men from the east to see the baby Jesus. When you consider that light travels at approximately 186,000 miles per second, the star you are referring to could have actually been billions of light years away. Translation? Well, the star could have actually been in place since the beginning of time. So what you're saying is that God could have known from the time he created the world that he would send his son to earth? Absolutely.
so God used the light to announce the news to the shepherd, to use the light to lead the wise men to where a baby was, and they had a clue with lights on it, and that's why we're having a party? That would be totally unfeasible, since it wasn't until 1882 before the first Christmas tree was lit by electricity. Before that, people glued candles to tree branches with melted wax. Where do you learn all this stuff, and why do you feel like you have to share it with us? I think I'm starting to get it. Christmas really is the story of light. Yes, Safina, it is. But we still haven't answered the most important question. Which is, when does this party finally <laughs> start? What is the true light of Christmas? That's the question I'm talking about. Does anyone notice anything missing? I don't think I need Beaker to answer this one. There's a star in the darkness that's shining so bright. shepherd saw. And the star the wise men followed was a reflection of his light. Yes, from the very beginning of time, God so loved the world that he knew he would send us his only son long before the night of Bethlehem. God already knew he would send his, the light of the world for each of us. I have it! 
What exactly do you have? The proper vapor, which composed primarily of water. Todd? She means let the party begin. Isn't that amazing? I want the boys and girls just to stand up and let's give them one more round of applause. You may be seated. I know, I don't know if that filled your heart with light the way it did mine, but I was so blessed by these children. And I just wanted to thank Miss Christie and Miss Carol who work with these kids. They are amazing, and they um, teach them a lot about Jesus in their music and their drama. So I really want to thank you guys for what you do. Thank the guys in the back, and um, thank you all for being here. It's really awesome to have somebody to sing to, and I really appreciate your coming out and supporting our children tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and close this in a word of prayer. And then we're going to do a little picture time over here with the kids, and then you're dismissed. Okay, thank you, Lord, so much for this night. I thank you for the light of Jesus that has come into the world, and we celebrate that at Christmas. And we thank you for helping us to celebrate it tonight with these children and, and the wonderful production that they did. We thank you that, um, that we can keep this in our hearts as we go through this holiday season that we won't get distracted by all the other things, but remember what the true meaning of Christmas is, the light of Jesus. And we thank you for, that, for this, for them communicating that so well to us tonight. We just ask that you will protect us as we go out and help us all to have a very Merry Christmas in your precious name. Amen. <laughs>